Great. So uh, this is my Live View story, or how I came to build a flight simulator in Live View. Uh, that's my Twitter handle and GitHub if you want to say nice things. So I run a company called Alembic in Australia. Um, I had to convince my wife on Sunday night <laughs> to come here and do a 10-day trip. Uh, so please, like, uh, you know, <laughs> say nice things. This was my trip. So on Wednesday, I flew out from Sydney to LA uh, and flew in here, um, actually, before I arrived. <laughs> um, it took me 27 hours, so, you know, I win the prize for being the furthest away. <laughs> Great, but what is the prize? No one knew that. It's jet lag. It's jet lag. <laughs> so I woke up at 5 this morning to do this talk. <laughs> Um, so yeah, how did this come about? Um, th there's a man that I know, he's a good friend, who is part of the Elixir community in Sydney. He had done this thing called the UAV challenge before. It was like a medical rescue with autonomous drones. And we had this crazy idea that we could build the ground station with multiple laptops and tablets and all that kind of stuff with LiveView. So that sort of started us thinking. Um, this is him actually doing that competition, and it turns out that COVID got in the way of the, the competition we were trying to enter, and they've canned it forever. So what we got out of this was a flight simulator in live view. So in order to sort of create a deadline-driven development, um, Phoenix Frenzy it came up in 2019. They haven't done it since, a bit of a shame. Um, but I decided to see if I could do a flight simulator to make use of some of the ideas that we were working on. So. Yeah, it actually took me a couple of weeks, but it turned out simpler than I thought it was going to be. Most of the work I was doing was wrestling with JavaScript and patching uh, Live View because the docs were a bit rough, so I tried to make them better. So these are the bits in the flight manifest. These are all the bits that we need. So first of all, I had to build the world's simplest and kind of dumbest flight simulator. So there's no physics. There's no linear algebra, because I did that 20 years ago and I've forgotten all of it. <laughs> and there's certainly no quaternions, which if you've ever done a flight simulator and you point right up and you start spinning around in circles, that's what you need quaternions for. They're basically four-dimensional uh, vectors so that you don't have this crazy uh, thing at the top where you spin around. So all we ended up using was just triangles, high school trigonometry, a couple of neat hacks, and a little bit of a dream. So the first thing that's important is the live view part. All that turned out to be was just mounting it and handling keyboard input. We needed a couple of instruments in our instrument panel. So the first one was an artificial horizon. I was like, yeah, you can sort of show pitch and you can show the roll of the plane. So that's cool. Um, we have a compass as well to show which direction we're heading in. And both of those I just did in SVG. And I'm pretty bad at using drawing tools, so I actually draw things in XML, <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, so we also needed a map. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel, use that in live view. So we hook, hook out to, um, I did use Leaflet. And then last night when I tried to rejig this for the latest live view and update it from three-year-old code, Leaflet just exploded map tiles everywhere. And I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? So I woke up at 5, panicking, going, how's this going to work? How do I put all the tiles back? Uh, the answer was Google Maps. <laughs> Don't use Leaflet. It didn't really work. So the map's showing us the lap and the long and the heading. And we've got a little airplane icon that we can spin around. And finally, <laughs> it's a little bit of an extra, is I want to see out the front of the plane. Um, so I found a little JavaScript library to do that too. So is this going to work? Well, I had no idea. So I went to find out. And it actually turned out all right. So let's look at some code, and then I'll see, show you the, uh, the, out the outcome. All right. So first things first, this is the live view. Can everyone read that code? Because I'm going to scroll around. Awesome. So all we need is a live view. We've got a couple of things. We have the initial state. We just need a lat long. I'm starting in Sydney Airport, because that's where I started this little journey. Um, and I'm pointing down the main runway. So that's the bearing straight down the guts. So we're ticking every 30 
uh, milliseconds. No, we're doing 30 frames a second. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, the, the, I'll have the link for you, but you can run it yourself. It's sitting on Gig Elixir on the lowest plan. Works pretty well. So yeah, we mount up and we start the timer, ticking every 30 frames a second. Uh, and then we set the initial state. So all this really is, is ticking along and doing an update every tick, and then we're just handling input. So for everything here, we're calling out to the flight simulator. So we can go up and down, change the speed, roll, pitch, all that kind of stuff. So all of these things look the same. Roll left, roll right, pitch down, pitch up. You get the idea. So let's have a look at the flight simulator. So I thought this was going to be really hard. Um, but it actually turned out to be pretty simple just doing high school trigonometry. So these are all our sort of constants, so we can jiggle, jiggle those. The main data structure there on line 33 is just we've got bearing, we've got altitude, we've got the pitch angle that's up and down for a plane, and the roll angle that's going banking left to right, how fast we're going, and the location we're at. Uh, I've got a little bit of a reset function there, because in case you're way up, we can just press spacebar and it'll just reset you back gently. That's the reset factor. And then all of these are just, you know, update the struct, um, you know, when we change anything. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Oh, yawing is where you change the rudder and you're turning left to right, but you're not banking, banking the plane. Um, you can go read this afterwards. These are all sort of doc tested. Uh, in the repo, it was kind of nice because it was kind of pure functional stuff. So we do an update so that when you do a tick, you can update the, the location of the plane. And we change the bearing based on how much you're rolling. And there's a little function down, down below to, to work that out. Uh, if you're pitched up, you're going to go up and change your altitude every tick. And you're also going to be moving forward. And there's a bit of trigonometry to figure out how much you move forward depending on whether you're going up or down. So simple maths. Um, what's the next function? Update the bearing. So we just make sure we're wrapping around if we're doing that. So when we go negative, we add 360 to it. Um, I'm not sure why we do degrees to radians and radians to degrees. Um, there's probably a reason. Three years ago code. Uh, altitude, we just, I have no idea why we divide by one. I'm assuming that's probably to turn it into a float that guesses. All we do is take the max um, and off we go. Ground distance is depending on what angle we're going. We're trying to figure out how fast we're going across the ground. So a simple cosine tells us that. Um, sine for the altitude delta as well. How much are we going up or down? Um, now this was kind of cool. So there's a hack. Because I'm not doing any physics, uh, when you roll, there's nothing really turning you, and a plane will actually have lift and turn around. So there's this little hack that I found at this URL to basically figure out, given a banking angle, um, a kind of rule of a rough rule of thumb that doesn't quite work for every single speed, for, but for basic all of the speeds, it will give you a good how much you're turning for how much you banked. So that's a little hack right there. Um, some weird constant times some other weird constant and a tan, <laughs> and we're good. Uh, if you actually care how that works, uh, the URL's there. So yeah, the rest is just um, the, the final thing is updating the location. Because we're dealing in lat longs and because we're going around a sphere, uh, it's not that simple. So I grabbed a library called GeoCalc that does a great circle arc um, because you're going around a sphere. So basically we're saying, how far, if we go this far um, in this direction, where do we end up as a lat long? So cool, that's all that is. Um, and then templates. So I rejigged this to use function components. I wasn't using that before, and that was a bit of a mystery. I think function components would have saved me some time. But see that span there? That's basically where I'm chucking all of the data, and there's not much of it, as you can see, that the JavaScript uh, library is going to use the map and the, the cockpit view. And we've got a hook there, so every time that updates, we call some functions in the JavaScript to do the update. Now, all we've got here is some simple function components. 
like I said, the, the artificial horizon, the compass, and the two JavaScript map and, and the things. So these are all just really simple tailwind styled function components. Um, yeah, there's nothing really much to see here. We grab keyboard input and we're rendering the children uh, with a slot, the default slot. It's called the inner block if you haven't seen that. Um, yeah, and all we're doing is just laying out all of these instruments in a grid. Nothing too fancy. Um, for the map and the cockpit view, we have to sort of set the size, otherwise it doesn't show up. Yeah, this is my attempt at drawing what you'll see in a minute. <laughs> so I did that by hand, took me a few hours, but I find that easier than drawing in a drawing tool, because I'm a nerd. Awesome, so, what's next? Um, these are the hooks, so if you haven't used hooks, um, this was kind of an experiment to see, well, how good is the JavaScript integration? Turns out, even three years ago, it was pretty good. So we're calling in some maps, we'll see that in a second. I've just got a little function to remember that span where we're putting all the data. This just extracts that out in a nice way. I could probably use data set there, I found that out the other week. Um, and then we set up the hooks, we've got a mount and an update for each one. So one mount for the map, one mount for the view and an update for each as well. So really nothing too fancy going on there. And I'm nearly done. I'll probably just show you the map because that's interesting. Ooh, don't, sh don't look at that. <laughs> so, what are we doing here? Um, basically just getting the position, setting up a map, disabling all of the stuff because we're gonna manage it and adding a little plane marker. And that actually turned out to be pretty reasonably easy in Google Maps when I was doing that at seven o'clock this morning. So yeah, it worked out pretty well. Um, yeah, and when we update, we just update those things. And I've got a little plane drawing there that I already had. And what we have to do is rotate that. So we're updating the rotation of the icon as well to match our bearing. So that's a cool little hack. I think you've seen enough code. Who wants to see it running? <laughs> All right. Here we go. So, I'm gonna hit escape and that sets us back at the start of the runway. All right, let's take off. All right, we're going as fast as we can, let's go. And let's, oh, let's bank this way. Let's go see Sydney Harbour. So that's live view flying a plane. <laughs> 